Hey guys, my name is Frank and this is my workshop. Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. It's been um, an interesting, interesting uh, spring, summer so far. Um, I've had uh, some issues trying to keep the video content uh, going. Um, I may have mentioned in an earlier video that we had a tornado come through our backyard, essentially, um, May, well, back in May, being in May. Anyway, um, it knocked down dozens of trees and it was a big, big mess to clean up. Um, I cleaned up some of the trees myself, but majority of the tree work was done by a contractor, uh, a local tree trimming contractor. He hauled away 20 dump truck loads of debris. There were a dozen stumps, uh, big oaks uprooted, big pine trees broken off, 20, 30 feet in the air. Um, bunch of fencing was, uh, was damaged and just got that repaired last week. I'll try to put a picture or two up here so you can, you know, kind of get an idea of the scope of the damage. And then the past couple, three weeks, it's been, you know, trying to get the lawn reestablished um, where the big excavator and crane and dump trucks and tractors and stuff were working. Um, so they pretty much demolished the, the backyard. So um, I've been planting grass seed. So the tree removal is covered by insurance because it fell on the fences. The fences were repaired, covered by insurance, minus the deductible. Um, really no, no significant damage to the house, fortunately. Just um, some bent gutters and a few roof shingles replaced. So all that's been fixed at this point. Well, the gutters haven't been fixed, but the roof shingles have been replaced. There was about a dozen shingles that were, um, were damaged by the branches of the tree that fell against the house. Um, anyway, so that's been keeping me busy. I do have, um, I do have some additions to the shop. I just wanted to share with you. Um, I have been, um, and you've seen in some of my previous videos, you know, this has my, been my workbench. This was originally my, one of my woodworking benches and in fact has, you know, storage down here for many of my, um, woodworking power tools and that sort of thing. Um, but I, you know, and I've been trying to weld on this table and you can see the burn marks. Um, so this is just, this is what I've been using up to this point. Um, but I finally decided to break down. I was trying to decide whether to put a metal top on this table or to get a separate, separate table. So what I wound up doing is buying this welding table from Northern Tool. Um, I put a shelf on the bottom of it, got my, my plasma cutter there. And the table came with some fixturing clamps and that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, hopefully that will give me a better um, place to do some welding. I won't have to worry so much about ground clamps on the work itself. And um, so haven't used it yet. Um, looking forward to um, getting to use it for, for welding. I think it'll be better than trying to weld on that wooden workbench. Uh, I did also get a new welding cart and I moved my uh, MIG welder to this cart and um, got my gas cylinder on the back and I bought a little um, stick welder. So this is um, a little 110 and two, 120 and 240 volt stick welder, a little lightweight inverter welder, 160 amp max. Um, so I, I, I have had a stick welder before and I, I actually still do have a stick welder. It's, um, I'll show you, it's over here in the, it's over here in the corner. And um, this is an ancient craftsman 
um, stick welder that I've never had hooked up in this shop. I built this shop five years ago. I didn't put in a 50 amp outlet, which is what that welder would require. Um, so anyway, I got this little one here. So we'll see how that works. Um, and um, a couple other items, just a, I got a new um, pedestal grinder. So this is an eight inch grinder, high speed grinder. So that'll supplement my other grinders here that I use for carbide, sharpening carbide. This is for woodworking tools. It's a slow speed grinder. And then this is my only other dedicated uh, metal working grinder. So it's a little six inch grinder. So this one has a wire wheel and a larger diameter um, grinding wheel on it. All right, so uh, I've got a little metalworking project. It's a pretty simple one, and um, I'll show you what we're going to do uh, with that. Work on. This is to make um, an umbrella holder for my um, daughter and her granddaughter, the granddaughter's stroller. So um, it's just a rectangular piece of aluminum that will drill a hole through for the umbrella um, rod to go through and this is this is the umbrella it's a inexpensive Walmart six foot umbrella and it's got a um, about 15 16 so just under 15 16 um, support rod so that'll go through a hole vertically and then um, the other end of the block um, needs to clamp around a one inch diameter um, frame member of the stroller so we're going to start with this piece of aluminum um, I just cut this from a uh, drop this is an um, inch and a quarter thick is plate aluminum inch and a quarter thick and I cut a piece about an inch and three quarters I'm going to finish it to an inch and a half in this dimension it's an inch and a quarter in this dimension so we'll drill the 15 16 hole through one end here and then we'll drill a one inch hole through the side and we'll split it and then cut it off We'll have, drill and tap two holes for cap screws uh, to go in here to create a clamp so that this bottom piece will clamp against the one inch diameter frame and then it'll clamp in this position and the uh, umbrella support rod will go through 15, a 15 16 hole here. All right, so um, this is irregularly shaped so the first task is to uh, square it up. So we'll do that. Um, I've got a nice high-speed steel shell mill here. Um, and this is very sharp. I mean, it's almost new. And it does a great job with aluminum. So let's um, go ahead and square up this aluminum block. All right. so. Of the faces on this, this one's was band sawed freehand, so it's a little, this is probably the straightest. So we'll start there. And um, these two surfaces here are both fat, um, mill flat surfaces. Uh, the dimensions on this are not critical. Um, we'll see where this gets us. Alright.
Turn on the VFD. Loosen the quill. Let's bring the quill down. Let's do a real quick touch off here, see where we are. All right. I'm going to set my quill DRO, zero it out. Take about um, a hundred thousandths, about a tenth of an inch off. Cutting fluid. So, finish on there is pretty darn good. Alright, I'm going to zero out the quill, DRO, raise the quill up. All right, that mill leaves a perfectly smooth finish. I mean, it's I mean, it's smooth. Okay. All right. So target is one and a half inches. And I'm showing 1.6, 1 1.6, 1 6.1, 6 .6, all right, I'm going to take a tenth of an inch off again, it's 1.66 right now, that'll leave me about 60 thousandths for the last pass, get me down to an inch and a half. And uh, the dimensions are not critical on this. Just want to get something close. Right, we'll come down and 
touch off. Tenth of an inch, hundred thousandths. See where we are. Should be about 1.5. All right, showing 1 1.561, 1.560, 1.560, 1.5, 1.557. All right, so looks pretty close. We're going to take um, 50 thousandths off. All right, let me get a file here and let's deburr this edge here. We'll do all four edges. Can't even get away from the spam calls in the shop. Okay, so we'll take this down. Right, let's measure it one more time and see where we are. All right, this end 1.555. Had some five five one point five five four one point yeah, five 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 one point five five four. So, I mean, that's within a thousandth or two uh, in terms of being parallel. All right, so let's. Um, I want to get down to 1.5, so I need to take 50, 55 thousandths off. Come down, touch off, let's see where we are. Is 
zero out the quill DRO. Bringing the quill down fifty thousandths. Take the burr off that edge. All right, well, we'll see where we are. One point five. 01, 1.501, both ends. So, all right, so I would say close enough for this. All right, um, the ends are obviously not square, so let's square those up. Since these two faces are the best, We'll go ahead and put them in the vise. So, that cleaned up that face.
cleaned up that face nicely. Okay, take another pass here on the other end. That didn't quite clean that side up. I'm going to take one more pass because that didn't quite, didn't quite take care of that.
Okay. That cleaned up that face nicely. All right, last thing I'm going to do is take a couple thousandths off of each of these two these two faces just to clean off the surface. down and touch zero the quill Come down and take I'll take ten thou off. Just ten thou. the quill up. You may ask why I don't just turn it over and mill back in the opposite direction certainly could could do that I just prefer that the chips be thrown away from me as opposed to toward me which they would be nice finish on there all right and take a second here and take the burrs off The, it's important to take the burrs off so that you don't have anything sticking above this surface which would interfere with the clamping, accurate clamping posi and positioning of the work. Alright, so again, nice finish on there all the way around. The last surface is this, last factory or mill surface I'm going to get in here without cutting myself on the shell mill which is quite sharp Taken eleven thousandths off, ten thousandths off. Let's come down to twenty thou. Like 
there. Pretty, pretty good surface finish on there. All right, little burr, take that off. Let's go over to the bench, see how we did. Okay, feels feels good. All right, let's see how we did on dimensions. Target was one point five, there's one point five oh one on that end. 1.500 on that end, the other dimension, we really weren't shooting for any particular dimension here, I was just cleaning up the faces, it's 1.238. Eight or 3.7, so pretty close. Okay, length is... Um, Somewhat arbitrary. Let's see what it turned out to be. Five, four, four point four, four and a half inches, four point four, four nine. That should be fine. Okay. Get some um, 
layout fluid on here. Actually, magic marker, Sharpie, and I'll bring you back when that's dry. Okay, let's lay out for the holes and we're going to put the 15 16 hole through here. I want at least a quarter inch wall on this side so that would bring me in about three quarters of an inch, 0.718 would be half of 15 16 plus a quarter. So we're just going to go three quarters of an inch. And this is 1.236. One point two three six. So half of that is point six one eight. All right. Let's see where that puts us. All right, so that's the center point for the 15 16 hole. All right, and back here, I want at least um, 3 eighths of an inch. So 0.375 across the back clearance. Then we we'll want a one inch diameter hole and we'll go ahead and center it on this. Alright, so it's 1.501, 1 1.5, 1.501, so we'll call 1.5. All right, so it's 0.75 would be the center line. I run it from both directions just to make sure it's centered. All right, and then the 3 eighths plus a half of an inch would be 0.5 plus 0.375, so 0.875, my math is correct. All right, so that'll give us the point for drilling the one inch diameter hole. And after we drill the hole, we'll split this and um, split it this way and then we'll cut this off so that we can drill two through holes and drill them here clearance holes and then tap into the bottom and so we can use a couple cap screws to clamp these two halves back together. Um, we probably don't even need this we could probably cut this the, the full length and then cut that cut that off but we'll see what we decide to do for that okay all right let's mark this I'm gonna come in let's go halfway it's four and a half so two and a quarter we'll cut 
cut it there. Let's go back to the 0.75. Just extend that cut line. Okay, so we're going to drill a one inch hole here, then we'll split it there, cut it there, so that the bottom piece with the half circle in it can clamp, and the kerf will provide the clearance, and then we'll do the, seven, six, the 15 sixteenths hole right through here. Okay. We'll come back when we get set back up on the mill. All right, so that's the quarter inch hole.
All right, so that's the 15 16 hole for the umbrella. All right, clearly having issues with the drill bits, so I'm going to switch to this end mill, bring the knee up. Okay, so we've got the two, the two through holes, the one inch hole for um, the frame of the stroller, and this 15 16 hole for the umbrella uh, rod. All right, it's pretty warm. I'm going to let it cool, and we'll we'll come back for the next operation.